Welcome to this week's episode of the Warlock's Brew. Yes, we're back. Um, I'm the Maroon Warlock. Uh, this week we're going to be doing some modern again. Uh, this time it's a derpy list. I know my uh, legacy video I mentioned I might do some bone picker build, but aside against that instead, uh, I'm going to go with this brew that someone from my college had shown me a couple years back um, when I was still in college and doing all that fun stuff. Uh, it's uh, Simic Evolve, although this is uh, since then... It's been turned more into a soul tie, mostly in the sideboard. Um, it's more of a budget deck. Like, I splurged a little bit with some fetches just to have the fetches in case a game goes grinding you want to filter the deck out. But, I mean, for the most part, like, the core of the deck right here, the only money card is the Snapcaster Mage. It's a three, uh, yeah, three of in the deck. And honestly, it's not really all that needed. I just like it because. Having access to flashing back some of your spells is really nice. But, I mean, like, it's not it's not intricate to the core of the deck. It's more, it's a utility mm -hmm. card in this deck. Um, with the lands, uh, it now it runs Botanical Sanctum, which at the time when I originally saw this list, mm -hmm. it did not have access to this kind of a land. This is a dual land I say mm -hmm. would be necessary before it was running fetches with a breeding pool. So, I mean, I got a couple breeding pools in here. I got the four botanicals because, as you can see, the curve is really low. You're playing ones and twos. You basically accept you're going to die to a chalice on one or a chalice on two, whichever. But this deck isn't really meant to be ultra competitive. It's more meant to just be fun, and it's something you can build on the cheap. I'm running Hinterland Harbors in there because I have all these basics and the breeding pools. I have a Watery Raven and Overgrown to add for a black source. That I can also fetch with the shock land, uh, the fetch lands here. Again, you don't need the fetch lands or any of that, or even the black splash. You can even just do this green blue. Hence, I'm just calling this Simic Evolve and Undying, I guess, if you want to include stuff. Anyway, so that's the lands. Moving on to the main deck, you've got are the creatures. Uh, do we have a way to sort by type? No, that, that'd be too easy. Um, so, <laughs> in your one slot, you've got your Cloudfin Raptors. It's the zero one one Flying Evolve for just a single blue. For those that played during the Theros Ravnica Standard, you'd probably remember this card from uh, the Mono Blue Devotion decks. Um, basically, everything in this deck is going to probably trigger its Evolve. Um, also, at the one drop for creatures, you have Experiment 1. These two creatures are the ones that you mostly want to lead off on are the experiment and the Cloudfin Raptor. Um, we got Young Wolves, or as I'm going to be calling the most likely, uh, Rob Starks. Uh, they're 1-1s one -ones with Undying, so what's nice is that if you go turn 1 Cloudfin Raptor into a turn 1 Young Wolf, you trigger the Cloudfin Raptor as Evolve. Um, and then if the, the Young Wolf dies before another thing triggers Cloudfin Raptor's Evolve, it'll Evolve a second time on the Undying Resolution with the young wolf um also in the one drop slot we've got a play set of pongifies and a play set of rapid hybridization they're effectively the same card destroy target creature can't be regen that creature's controller makes a three three uh green creature for pongify you get a monkey for hybridization you get a frog lizard excuse me um Moving to the two slot, you got some mana leaks because counter spells are nice, and this deck really has no interaction otherwise with your opponent's strategy. Um, I actually did some tests with this earlier. Pongifying a Death Shadow is really satisfying, but these Pongifies and the hybridizations are meant for your young wolves and your uh, strangle root geists. Um, still in the two drop, we also have remands to stall because this deck's more of a tempo aggro style. A la like a Delver deck, except without Delver, because you're running mostly creatures. Um, the deck used to run Jataxium Pro, but as we all know, that got banned with uh, the last banned announcement, or the one before that, I can't remember which. So I had to find something to fill up the 4 slot. So I put in a place of Spreading Seas, because I figure, worst case scenario, it still draws cards, it messes with your opponent's land base, and mm. it hurts Tron, and if you know me, I just don't like Tron. Not going to get into it unless I get super tilted during some of these competitive league matches. Um, we got three Snapcasters just because, again, Flashing Back, Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, or your Counter Spells is always nice. Um, you got Shamble Sharks, which kind of top out your Evolved Critters um, with a 2-1. 
Flash, Evolve, mm. and then you got your Strangle Root Geists, which have Haste and Undying for double green, and again, mm. they trigger the Evolves. Uh, the biggest Cloudfin I got, I think it was either, I think it was a 3-4. Yeah, because that's that's the mathematically highest one. Like your your creature base is going to be a lot of three power guys in an ideal situation. The deck used to run eighteen lands because of how low this curve is, but again, taxing pro being gone and subbing and spreading seas kind of messed with that. So now it is running twenty lands. Otherwise, it'd be running eighteen. Um, so yeah, basically, ideal plays or ideal lines of play would involve going turn one Cloudfin mm -hmm. Raptor. Turn two young wolf into a pongify on turn two. So you now have a three three, a two two, and then the two three raptor that's gonna be attacking that turn. Um, other really nice setups involve uh, the strangle root guys coming down on turn two, and then turn three, uh dropping say an experiment one or some something else that can evolve and then pongifying the strangle root guys to get an ape or a uh rapid hybridization to get a frog lizard. And you now have the uh, geist as a three two triggering evolves along with the Pongify creature token cre triggering evolves. So, yeah. And again, the Young Wolf, a.k.a. Rob Starks, are more... They can attack, but I mean, if you need to block, they're probably your best choice for blockers because they give you two chances to block, and they can also power up your Experiment 1s and your Cloud Fins and your Shamble Sharks, too, because Evolve works on both power and toughness. So, that's the main deck... That's what I'm running for now. Like I said, the land base is a little on the pricey side more than I would have liked. But, again, this all this right here really isn't needed. You can find other lands. You even run just basics or hinterland harbors or more breeding pools. Like I said, I like to filter my deck a little bit when possible. And I figured I had them sitting there and didn't have Misties around. And I wanted to play some black in the sideboard. Uh, only lands I would say might be recommended highly are the Botanical mm -hmm. Sanctums just because, again ones twos that's it uh moving on to the sideboard we got negates to deal with they, like these was going for burn things like that and they just kind of exist mm -hmm. i have stubborns in here and now i'm looking at them this is where i'm a bad brewer as i just said i mm -hmm. think the highest the raptor can get is a three four and i think it's the highest you're going to get in any creature in general so these would have been better off probably as Dispels or Spell Pierces. But either way, I really didn't have access to either. Or I had access to the Spells, just not the Spell Pierces. And that was just something I just noticed now. So we're just going to run with it. If it sucks, it sucks. It's going to be funny. Again, this is more of a dirt brew. This is the point of this series is to make some brews that work and then some brews are meant to be kind of just goofy. This is this is the latter kind where it's meant to be goofy to keep people on their toes. We got a pithing needle for any of those decks that have annoying interactions where you just don't want to deal with things. And I think it's like the most underrated sideboard card ever. Uh, we got nature's claims just to deal with all matters of enchantments and artifacts. I mean it sucks to gain them for life but I wanted to have like a catch all rather than the uh if eh, feeling of um, natural state where it's three or less. If you have a deck that's running big artifacts, mm -hmm. Nature's Claims is better. Um, we got a couple Feed the Clans for burn because I'm not mm -hmm. totally sure how the burn matchup would go. And just being able to gain five life for two mana just feels right. Especially in some games where you just, you're just you bricking a little bit. Uh, we got a Hooting Mandrels for games where we think it's going to go long and we want to have a 4-4 Trampler. I mean... Hooting Mandrels works as a Stubborn Denial, and it triggers Evolve again for some of these guys. So, If he works well, I might actually just make it a main board addition. Because, again, I'm running an extra couple of lands, and I might be able to get away without those. Um, and also, I like Delve spells, and it's a bunch of monkeys. It fits the theme. Um, in the black slot, we got some Fatal Pushes, because it's the best removal in Modern, in all honesty. like If you can find a way to fit a Fatal Push in anywhere, it's probably worth it. Um, we got some contaminated grounds. This is also kind of shore up the Tron matchup or in matches where like spreading seas is really awkward because they're running a crap ton of blue. You can just go, okay, we'll side in a couple contaminated grounds instead, and now they hurt themselves. I actually did this against Death Shadow, and it was really funny because like as much as they want to lose life, you get them to a point where it's like they don't want to lose all the life. So contaminated grounds is good against the greedy mana bases, while not, uh, and it also helps because. 
you're you're basically playing weenie creatures, so any way you can get some extra damage in, cool. But again, this stuff's more of the optional if you want to go the black splash like I did. It's not necessary. And then I got surgical because graveyard decks exist. And it's always good to have if someone has a combo and you manage to say mana leak a part of the combo with a surgical in hand. Just surgical it. Um, I think that covers it. And like I said, this is the type of deck where you just kind of die to a turn one chalice, or either a chalice on one or a chalice on two. I'm not think I'm thinking the legacy all of a sudden. Jeez. Um, beyond that, it's a fun deck. Uh, and I figured I could use doing a fun derpy deck for a change. So we're gonna do this. We're already entered into the league. Um, we're probably gonna start our first match in a few moments. Uh, so hang tight. It'll be fun. Uh, I'm the Maroon Warlock, the Maroon Warlock Gaming, and this is the third episode of the Warlock's Brew. Enjoy.